Hi everybody, Tom Sparks with Sparks Media Group here. Today I'm going to go over the process of importing iGUIDE data into Stitch for processing. This step is done after you've scanned a home and before you can upload it to iGUIDE for further processing. Let's get into it. First thing I'm going to do is load the data files, which I've done here in Stitch already. Uh, and then I'm going to go through and make sure that all my wall thicknesses are set to 6 inches. 6 inches is generally uh, the wall thickness for most residential construction homes. And so that's what we're going to put there and that will help get a better accurate measurement for the overall square footage. Uh, you can always bring a tape measure or a laser measure to your listing or your property that you're scanning and you can measure it to get a specific wall thickness. But six inches is what we've normally put in and that's what we're going to use. So the first thing I do uh, is I set the initial pano. Um, usually this is right at the front door. And to do that, we're going to right click and then we're going to go set as initial pano. This is where the tour will start uh, once it's been processed by iGUIDE. Next, I'm going to go through each of these panos and I'm going to hide any closet doors that are open. We scan inside closets and inside garages uh, for the data, but we're not going to use those on the 3D tour. So I'm going to hide any of those unsightly areas. To do this, we're going to right click on the panel and hit hide an eye guide. If your uh, client says, oh, you know, I wanted to see the garage, you can always unhide it after processing, but this is just uh, to hide it so that it doesn't show up on the finished tour when it's presented to them. I do wish that this window was movable so you could see the entire top and bottom of this panel. Uh, in order to see what's below or above this, you have to use your mouse wheel and scroll up or down. I wish you could move this pane around a little bit to show more of it. We're going to go on the second floor here and do the same thing. I tend to leave laundry rooms in the scans or in, on the 3D tour. Now once I have that all done, I'm going to go and make sure the floor labels are correct. So I'm going to change this and call it first floor. And this one is fine at second floor. Now as you can see this data, if we zoom in on it, the lines are all over the place and this should look like a, a cleaner version of a floor plan. Um, but right now there's some misalignments. There's one here and there's several. Same thing on this floor. There's several misalignments. Uh, and so we're going to try to correct this. There's a couple ways to do this. We can click on the panel that's misaligned. You highlight it and this changes color. And then you can use your right mouse wheel and hold it down and rotate the panel. And then let that go. Use your left mouse wheel and move it into place. We can repeat the same process for this one. We're going to rotate it with the right mouse. With the left mouse, we're going to move it and put it into place. That looks okay. Let's go to the second floor. And I'm focusing on this one first. We're going to rotate it, drag it into place. Now, let me do let me get this one right here. Rotate it and put it in place. If we wanted to, we could probably uh, complete the stitching process and send this to iGUIDE and they should be able to process it normally. But I like to take it a little step further and clean up these lines. Um, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to use this auto arrange all scans tool. 
and I may be using this incorrectly or use it different than others, but this is what I do. I'm going to hit this magic wand, and it's going to say, are these scans in the correct position? I can go through each scan one by one and hit yes, but I'm impatient, so I like to hit yes to all. It's going to process everything, and now you can see that the lines are much tighter. We do have one that was moved way out here. I'm going to have to figure out where that goes. So I'm going to go back and find it. And it was a garage scan. So I'm going to go back and find the other one. And I'm going to put it in its place. Same with that. How do I know that's where it goes? Well, I have it highlighted. And I'm moving it around. And you can see right here there's a little bit of a wall and there's another wall and that corresponds with this wall right here and that wall right there so I'm going to drag it over and line it up and that's where that goes another way you can tell is where this arrow meets this area right here up here is in the same spot so if we go to the scan before and we put the arrow on that same door it also is going in the same spot right here and that's how we can tell so that looks pretty good you can see the lines are nice and tight when you click on the second floor it looks like a hot mess again so now we're gonna do the same thing here we're gonna arrange all scans if it had scans all over the place this one's here and this one's there and it just doesn't know what to do uh, and you don't like how it arranged it you can hit Control z and that will undo everything so now we're back to where we were and i'm just going to arrange it again Now I think this looks pretty good. All the lines are nice and tight. None of the rooms seem out of alignment. I'm just gonna go, go ahead and double check. I think we're good. So that's basically how I will process data. Um, there's other tools that you can use here. You can adjust colors. So you click on the wizard hat and then we can go and adjust um, shadows. You can adjust highlights, uh, brightness and contrast. You can make it how you want. When you're done with that, you can hit copy if you like those settings and then paste them to all. Uh, you can hit preview and it will give you a preview of what that looks like. I typically don't mess with the color settings. Now let's say you really like this shot and you want to make a pano out of it. What you could do is click on the camera icon it's going to open it up as a panel and then I'm going to zoom in a little bit actually you know what I'm going to use I'm going to use this one I'm going to take that image There you go. Once we have the image set up how we want, we're going to hit capture. And you see up here, it saved the image. It tells you the path it saved it to and hit done. And now if we open our folder, we have the image that we just saved right here. Once we have everything stitched together, all our photos exported how we want. 
and we only have to export photos if we want to provide those images to the agent. Uh, exporting photos is not part of a general uh, eye guide processing. Once we have it all set, we're going to hit the save icon and then we're going to hit export. Here it's going to say that the floors have unusually small exterior wall thickness of less than 16 centimeters. I ignore that. And then here it's going to show us where there's scans that are closer than 20 inches. And we're going to hide a couple of those. So we're going to go down and you got that one and that one. So I'm going to hide that one. And then got 15 and 0. So I'm going to hide 15. Once we have that hidden, we're going to hit save and we're going to hit export again. We'll get the same error about first and second floor have unusually small exterior wall thicknesses. Again, I'm going to ignore that. What it's going to do now is it's going to stitch all the panels together and it's write data into an export file that we're going to upload to iGUIDE. It'll say property exported successfully. We can click this button and launch iGUIDE uh, in a web browser that will allow us to upload the file or we can hit close. From here, you'll see that there's an export folder created and inside there is a tar file that has all the data that we just stitched together. We are gonna take this tar file and go to manage.youreyeguide.com and we're going to create an eye guide and upload this data there and I'll put that in another video. Alright guys, that's it. Thanks for watching.